Hello students, today we will study unit number 4 which is electrical machines. So in this video we are going to understand the construction and the working principle of shaded pole induction motor. So I hope you are ready with your pen and paper. So without wasting much time let us start this video. Okay. So first of all this motor is a type of a single phase induction motor and this type of motors are used for the low duty purposes. Why? Because this type of motor will provide very much less initial torque to start it. Okay. Now we will move on with the construction first. So in the construction on the diagram you can, you can see that uh, first of all we will discuss about this type of projected poles that you can see projected poles are there. Now that projected poles are made with the help of a silicon steel material so that hysteresis losses can be reduced and also this projected poles are laminated so that eddy current losses can be reduced. Now, as you can see that each and every pole has one slot. So, this is the slot and on one side of the slot, one copper wire is wounded like this. Copper wire is wounded and that is known as copper ring and that copper ring will behave like a inductor. Okay. So, that portion having the copper ring is known as a shaded part of the projected pole and remaining portion which don't have any copper ring is known as unshaded part of the projected pole. Now we will move on with the next part. We will talk about the field winding. Now field winding means what? That with the help of a insulated copper wire, we will wound that wire on each and every projected pole and this type of field winding is used to produce the magnetic field or you can say to produce the magnetic flux. Okay. Now we will move on with the most outer part which is known as core. Now core means what that it is the outer part you can see and that core is also made with the help of a silicon steel to reduce the hysteresis loss and core is also laminated to reduce the eddy current loss. So, this is all about the uh, case of the stator. We have discussed about stator which is a stationary part. Now, we will talk about the rotor. As we know that in the case of uh, single phase induction motor as a rotor always we are using squirrel gauge rotor which don't have any winding but it has cylindrical laminated bars and that cylindrical laminated bars are short circuited or are connected or are fixed with the help of two end rings and it has one main shaft and after that that uh, whatever rotor is there that rotor will insert inside of this stator so from the front if you will see so this type of diagram you can draw so this is all about the construction now we'll move with the working principle that how this motor rotates so for that purpose initially what we will do we will supply the single phase alternating current to this uh, windings Okay. Now, as we are supplying the single phase alternating current, so for that purpose, we know that alternating current is a variable current which changes its magnitude and direction sinusoidally like this. So, this type of diagram we can draw in which I have mentioned certain points that later we will discuss. Also, these three diagrams are based on what they are nothing but I have taken certain portion, that much portion you can say, that much portion over here. Okay, that is what copper ring, it will behave like an inductor, this is the slot, this is shaded part, that is unshaded part of the projected pole. Okay. Now we will try to understand this figure first. So during A to B, during A to B, when current will start to increase from 0 up to certain value, up to certain value, at that time copper ring which is behaving like an inductor will oppose this increasing current so that from the copper ring less current will flow so that from the copper ring less magnetic field or less flux will start to flow. This lines indicates what magnetic flux or magnetic field. Okay. So why less Magnetic flux or field is produced because copper is a that, that copper ring behaves like an inductor and inductor will never uh, produce any changes inside it. It will always oppose the change. 
so over here current is increasing from zero to some value so it will oppose the increasing current so it will decrease the current so less current will pass from the copper winding or you can say from uh, shaded part so less magnetic flux will pass from this shaded part okay now during b2c during b2c during b2c almost current becomes maximum so at that time whatever copper ring is there that becomes saturated so that now uniform magnetic field or you can say uniform magnetic flux will pass through shaded part as well as from the unshaded part okay. now during c to d during c to d when current will try to become zero at that time again this copper ring which behaves like an inductor will oppose this type of decreasing current so what it will do it will increase the current that it has stored so that from the copper winding maximum current will flow that means from this shaded portion maximum magnetic field or you can say maximum magnetic flux will start to flow that means each and every shaded part will produce maximum magnetic force on the rotor how so over here maximum magnetic force on the rotor over here maximum magnetic force on the rotor over here maximum magnetic force on the rotor over here maximum magnetic force of the rotor so what's happened now rotor will start to rotate in the clockwise direction so in this way that shaded pole induction motor works now we'll discuss about its uh, characteristics curve which is torque versus speed so over here i have taken percentage of full load torque and from the di and over here i have taken the speed from the diagram we can say that if you want to start this motor at that time you have to supply 50 percentage torque of its maximum load value then only it can be started as you can see from the diagram that as speed is increasing that torque that torque is also increasing that torque can increase up to the maximum breakdown torque and after that torque will start to decrease and becomes zero when synchronous speed is equals to actual speed now synchronous speed means what that it is such a speed which is produced by this stator and uh, actual speed means what the speed with which rotor is rotating so generally synchronous speed is always greater than actual speed okay so that is all about the characteristic curve now we will understand its advantage advantage is what its construction is very simple mechanically it is strong disadvantage is what that i told you they are used for the low duty purpose why because initial torque is less so over here poor starting torque low power factor that's why its efficiency is also very much less now we'll discuss about its application as they are used for the low duty purpose as initial torque is very much less so that is why they are used in toy motors tape recorder fan hair dryer and film projector so this video mein bas itna hai so till then read hard work hard thank you very much